Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech. In today's video, guys, I'm going to be bringing you my 2016 How to Build a Mini ITX Gaming PC Guide. Now, in this video, yeah, we're going to be building an actual full PC. I'm going to show you how to put all the hardware together. And then, at the end, I'm going to be show you, yeah, I'm going to show you me clicking that good old power button and the system actually working. That's what you guys want to see. Now, if you want to see actual... Um, uh, software installation, so like the OS and the drivers. I would recommend you to check out part two of my 2015 guide, since I'm not going to actually go into it in this guide. But without further ado, as for some of the main components, we're going to be using, for the actual gaming bit, since it is a gaming build, we're going to be using uh, this mini um, 2 gig MSI GTX 950. This is an OC variant. It's overclocked slightly, but nevertheless, it does run very, very cool. And because this card is really, really short and only does require the one six pin, it's going to keep relatively quiet and yeah, it's not going to take up uh, much space in the case. We're also going to be using um, an i5, the 4D, is it the 4690K? That's the one. And then let's put that down there. And then, yeah, as for the um, motherboard. We're going to be using um, this one here. This is the Asus H81i Plus. So a very, very small MOBO here. Um, but don't let that fool you. Small motherboards, uh, they've got nothing to do with performance, weirdly enough. A small board is just a small board. It just doesn't contain lots of expansion slots. So it's only got the one PCI Express x16. So you can't install other things like, say, PCI Express sound cards and say like Wi-Fi cards and stuff like that. But in general, yeah, this is going to be an absolute solid board for this build. And then just lastly for the case, and um, just to kind of show you it on camera, we're going to be using the Cooltech uh, Cool Cube Maxi. This is actually a, a micro ATX case. Where, um, it can actually fit uh, a micro ATX motherboard in. But the reason we're using this case is because it's a little bit bigger so that just the components in general have a little bit room yeah, a little bit more room to breathe. A lot of mini ITX PCs do get a little bit hot and do get a little bit loud. So by using this case, um, it's just going to allow more airflow. And in general, it's just going to allow the components to run quieter and a little bit cooler, which is always nice. So without further ado, let's kind of get into the build. So yeah, let me guys show you how to build a mini ITX gaming PC for 2016. Just before I start, I'll have all these system specifications in the video's description with links to Amazon and also links to any overviews or video reviews I've done of such products. If you're interested in knowing more about the components used today, feel free to check out that description box. So peeps, to get started on yet another full PC build guide for 2016, I personally like to install the CPU, RAM and CPU cooler onto the motherboard first, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So first up, you want to lift up the retention arm for the CPU socket and locate the triangle at the bottom left of the CPU or the two tiny cutouts on the chip. With this identified, you can then align it up with the socket and plop it in. No force is needed. Once it's in, lower the retention arm, and that's it, you've just installed a CPU. As for the installation of RAM, it's as easy as locating which way to install the modules and pressing them into place. The current standard for memory is DDR3, however DDR4 is becoming more popular as it's on many of today's high-end motherboards. Be sure to grab the right kit when shopping around for your memory. Once you've made sure these have clicked into place, you can move on to installing the CPU cooler. As mentioned, we're not going to be going for the Intel stock solution, but an aftermarket solution provided by Noctua, the NH-L9X65, a performance enhanced version of the NH-L9i. The installation of this cooler starts off by slotting the metal backplate under the board and placing four washers over the bolts. With the washers in place, you can then place two mounting bars on top of them, and then screw down the mounting bars with four thumb screws. The last step is to add a little thermal compound, as per the user manual, and screw down the cooler with the two pre-attached screws. Overall, this cooler is very easy to install and is going to give us a lot better temperatures, and also be a lot quieter when compared to the stock cooling solution from Intel. Moving on to the installation of the motherboard, first you want to attach the metal I.O. shield to the back of your case that came with your motherboard. Once you've done this, you'll want to locate the mounting holes on your particular board and remove any additional standoffs that your case may have pre-installed. Having more installed can cause shorting out of your board and two less can cause the board not to be secure in the case. Once you're done verifying standoffs, place some other board into the case and screw it into place with the appropriate screws. As this is a small board, there's only four screws to screw down, however, larger boards can have up to nine. Do also note this board has four pre-attached standoffs and cannot be removed from the case. Now that the motherboard's installed, you want to hook up the cables from the front of the case. These include the USB 3 and USB 2 headers, a audio header, and a few LED connectors in addition to the power button. Locating where all these can go can be a little tricky, so feel free to reference your motherboard's manual. This will go over all the internal headers in detail. 
As for attaching the two 92mm fans to the case, you want to place the fans onto the case and use a screwdriver with a large handle to screw these in. In the orientation, you want them to blow air. Since this case has no fans included, these are both going to be exhaust fans with the fan hubs facing the rear. Although these fans are small, they are rated to spin slow, so it will be relatively quiet. If you find your board doesn't have enough 4-pin fan headers, you can pick up a 4-pin adapter from Amazon that can support many fans that attach to a single motherboard header. I'm using one that came with a different Noctua cooler I've reviewed on the channel in the past. Next up we're going to be installing the two Seagate mechanical hard drives. This case supports hard drives on a metal bracket, quite different to many cases, however it is easy to do. You want to slide the hard drives into the bracket and then screw them both into place with the four provided screws for each drive. This bracket has rubber dampeners attached so be sure to only screw these down with a moderate amount of force so these are effective. As for the cables you want to connect a SATA power and SATA data cable to each of the drives. Moving on to the graphics card, installing graphic cards generally is an easy step and requires you first to remove two metal slots from the back of your case. Once you've done this, push the graphics card into the motherboard's PCI Express TAM16 slot. This board only features a single PCIe expansion slot so it's easy to locate. Once you've done this, you can use the screws from the two metal brackets to secure the GPU into place. Up next is installing the power supply. Before installing the actual unit, as this is a fully modular power supply, we can install the power cables into the components beforehand. These cables include the main 24-pin motherboard cable, the 8-pin CPU cable, and the power cable for the graphics card. The 24-pin motherboard cable connects near the right of the board, the 8-pin cable connects near the top left of the board, and the PCIe cable connects to the end of the graphics card. Next we're going to be installing the hard drive cage into the case, and before we do you'll want to connect the previously attached SATA data cables from the hard drives to the motherboard. Also making sure you do this for any SSDs, making sure that SSDs are attached to the SATA 3 ports as these provide 6 gigabits of bandwidth needed for SSDs to perform to their best. These are the gold ports on this particular board. I decided to use Velcro to attach the SSD to the case. Once you've done this, screw the cage into the case with the 4 screws. The last component to install is the power supply. Everything is a tad cramped now, so you want to organise a few cables so you can get the unit fixed into place. Once you've done some cable management, connect up all the loose power cables from the board, hard drives and graphic card. Once you've done this, mount the power supply into place and screw it in with the screws provided with your case. After this, be sure to slide all side panels and secure these into place with their respective screws. And the gaming PC is built, and is the moment of truth. Does it turn on? Sure does. As this case is made entirely of aluminium, you want to wire down the case. As you can see in the footage, it's a fingerprint magnet for sure. As I roll the outro, I'll be sure to show you some shots of the fully assembled machine. So peeps, there we are, that was the actual PC guide, hopefully, that you guys have been able to fold this card and build yourself a mini ITX gaming PC. Now if you guys want to know how this actually performs, do feel free to check out my review of the GTX 950. It's a very good card for about £110 here in the UK. In general, very, very good for 1080p gaming, and also if you're doing stuff like video editing, because it's got good cores, it will also have the acceleration there in video editing, which is nice. And also I think the final render for videos will be a little bit faster. But in general, thank you very much for watching. If you want to pick up any of these parts or see all these parts, I know when I built my actual pestle rig, I saw on my actual Amazon affiliate account that a lot of people actually just built my system as it was. So changed no components, just bought all of the parts. And I've seen many, many, many people do this. So if you want to just grab all the parts I use for this build, just every single one, and build a PC exactly how it is following this guide to the absolute T, Feel free, I don't mind, and um, that's about it. So, links are in the description, and in general, if you want to know how to install the OS and the drivers, I would recommend you to check out part two of my mini ITX gaming PC guide that I did post in 2015. That again does go over the driver installation, the OS, and I think it goes over a little bit of software, and I think in that one I did also include benchmarks. But as again, since I've uh, already reviewed the 950, you can check out that video for benchmarks of that car to see how it performs in modern games like Battlefield 4. Fallout 4 and um, yeah, just games like that, modern games, and they're all run at 1080p. So, guys, without further ado, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.